Welcome everyone. My name is Megan. I am here with CBT Nuggets from the Sales Department. Today we're going to have Keith Barker and Anthony Sequera discussing CCNP routing and switching and what's new. Go ahead and take it away. Hey, thank you so much, Megan. This is Anthony Sequera with CBT Nuggets, and I am joined by my dear friend, Mr. Keith Barker, and we want to take you through version 2.0 of CCNP, routing and switching, as Megan indicated, specifically what is new, what's exciting, what are some of the biggest changes in this new iteration of one of Cisco's most popular certifications, the CCNP RS. Let's pick it up with the first of three exams, that is route. That does indeed feature the most changes in any of the three exam areas. On the left-hand side of the screen, you can see version 1 in all of its glory. Notice EIGRP, OSPF, BGP, V6, IP, redistribution, layer 3 path controls, and broadband in red. Broadband is the only topic domain from route version 1 that does indeed exit stage left. And then we have VPN basics and GRE. Notice on the right-hand side we have our version 2 for route. I put IPv6 in green to indicate that you're going to go deeper than you did in version 1. So I really consider it a new topic for version 2 because of the depth you go in. And then look at all those other subjects in green. All of those additional subjects in green are additions compared to version 1. And, Keith, thanks for telestrating. I lost for – oh, there are my telestration controls. All right, great. I'm back in business. So in green, all those topic additions, really remarkable, right? I mean, this is a lot of new stuff. And when I say, like, network principles, keep in mind we're talking about the details of, like, TCP and UDP and how they operate. When I say security, we're talking about router-based ACLs and all kinds of additional Layer 3 security mechanisms. When I say services, a hodgepodge of services like DHCP, NTP, SNMP, NetFlow, IPSLA. So when you start dissecting some of these additional topics, we see that we are going to go well beyond the version 1 content. Let's slide over and take a look at the biggest changes to the switch course. And they're pretty, really obvious, aren't they? Look at this. Wireless, voice over IP, and video were indeed inclusions in your previous version of switch. Those exit stage left and are replaced by switch administration, things like administrative templates, making secure shell connections to the device, SPAN and R-SPAN for monitoring, StackWise, one of the many technologies that we can use to eliminate spanning tree protocol between multiple physical devices, and then some Layer 2 protocols like CDP, woohoo! It makes a comeback from the ICNT materials, and some, some related things like VTP and how to maintain and monitor those particular Layer 2 protocols. So you see the big difference with switch? Sure. It's wireless, voice over IP, and video exiting the course. And as Keith and I were chatting just before this webinar, makes good sense because there's a wireless track. There's a voice track. There's a video track. So you technologies go where you belong. <laughs> now the third exam, and that's T-Shoot. T-Shoot is going to experience change as well. Notice Cisco really wants us to stay on this maintaining and monitoring, you know, technologies portion. So things like IPSLA and NetFlow are going to rear their head again here. But then it goes into troubleshooting the specific topics that we discussed in Switch and Route. So, for instance, in the version 2 T-Shoot, one of the technologies that you would be needing to troubleshoot would be the DMVPN that has reared its head in the new route class, for instance. So anything that was in the route and the switch for that particular version, we would potentially have to troubleshoot. 
One of the other things that we get a lot when people are you know, approaching some topic is, okay, how do I get ready for this? And I would strongly recommend that the best first step into accomplishing anything is having a desire to do it. I've discovered in my life that the more motivated I am to accomplish something, the more energy and effort I will spend in getting it done. So one of the first things I would recommend is go up to Cisco's website and for each of the exams, route, switch, and T-shoot, get their blueprints. They're going to give you detailed information on exactly what they're going to be requiring a CCNP certified individual. And look at this, Anthony. Check this out. Right here we have this 40% of the exam is layer 3 technologies. <laughs> and one of, the, one of the gotchas is this. Because layer 3 technologies also involve, of course, BGP and all of our IGPs like EIGRP and RIP version 2 still around and OSPF, but it also involves IPv6. So if we're going to implement or troubleshoot or work with a network, it could be a layer IP version 6 transport, or it could be IP version 6 routes that we're carrying, or with BGP we can mix and match. We can use a BGP with IPv4 connectivity and carry IPv6 routes or vice versa. So the challenge is we need to be very prepared for any of those environments, IP version 4 or IP version 6 with all of those routing protocols. So here's what I would strongly recommend doing. If you have a pencil or pen or something to make, take notes with, I would recommend you write down these following steps. Number one, before you start studying, I would set yourself up for success by identifying what you are going to study. So if the blueprint for route or switch or T-shoot has, let's say, uh, 50 items in it, well, it would be a great idea to identify those 50 items, put them in a spreadsheet or on a Word document, what have you, and then on each of those elements, rank yourself. This is a tip that I learned from Anthony many years ago. Rank yourself on how well you know that topology or that technology right now. For example, maybe it's IPv6 neighbor discovery protocol. You, you know, one to five. Five being, I know this great, I, I can implement it, I can troubleshoot it, I can explain it to others. One being, hey, I didn't know there was a neighbor discovery protocol with IPv6. And then as you go through, keep track of your progress. So maybe one day you're going to study neighbor discovery protocol. You're going to maybe watch some videos, watch some nuggets, read some content, lab it up and line up all those resources before learning. So let's say for tomorrow, for example, if we're going to study IPv6, identify what you're going to study, what resources you're going to study with, and then when it comes time for studying, it's not a matter of, okay, what am I going to do? We're simply going to go ahead and take that time for studying, and we're going to go ahead and use it. The other thing, too, about time is this. I, I have... A, Everybody, we all come from various backgrounds and different walks of life, but we are all time constrained. We only have so much time in a day. And I've discovered that by scheduling literal blocks of time is extremely helpful. And then guess what? During that block of time, do what you said you were going to do. If you're going to be studying IPv6, if you're going to be studying BGP or EIGRP or whatever it is you're going to be studying, make sure you're allocating that time. You go to those resources you planned on and that you actually do that study. The other thing I found very helpful is committing. For example, Anthony, let's say that I was going to pursue the service provider CCIE. Sure. If I, told, if I told Anthony and I told people on the web, hey, I'm committed to doing this and getting it done within eight months or a year, having that pressure, that's a good positive pressure to help encourage me to get that job done, to, to do it, because I know I'm, I'm now accountable. The other thing is this. Regarding starting the studying, let's say we outlined our resources and we blocked off the time. If There are three techniques I've discovered that are helpful in actually getting something done. Number one is to go ahead and not think about it. So that's a not right there, think. And you might say, Keith, what do you mean don't think? Well, if I've scheduled off two hours tomorrow to study and it's time to study, not thinking about it can simply say, I'm not going to consider do I want to do it, do I not want to do it, just do it. Don't think about it, go ahead and simply do it. That can help motivate you to get it done. And once you start, it's fantastic. The other process is to think about it. And in this case, with this think, I would like you to consider thinking about all the negative consequences that would come up if you don't do it. If you just sit and don't act on your goals and your objectives, Think about the negative consequences. So whether you're going to not think about it and just do it, or think about the negative consequences, 
those are both great motivators to get us to do what we, what we set up to do. And again, the secret is, I think it was Mary Poppins or somebody who said, well begun is half done. I and mean, once we get into the studies, it's fun, it's exciting. I would also recommend measuring the progress. So if we had 50 topics and we ranked ourselves between one and five for each one of those topics, when we're done studying, if we were at a one and now we've read it, we've studied it, we've watched the videos, we've labbed it up, and now we're at a level two or a level three, we should mark that on paper because that will give you an idea ability to see our progress. One of the other secrets I've discovered is that if in my life, if I can see progress, if you and I can see progress, that we're making progress going forward in the direction of our goals, that's very, very motivating. And so we could look back at the end of a week and say, gee, you know what? I didn't know how to do an IPv6 BGP, BGP um, peering relationship, but now I can, and I can verify that it's working, and I can troubleshoot it. And, that, and if you put it on paper, it gives you a good ability to see your progress. You know, I feel step. so passionate about this recommendation from you, Keith. I use it personally, and in all of the courses that I create at CBT Nuggets, I mm -hmm. provide an Excel spreadsheet tracker for students so they can go through nugget by nugget and track their progress. Oh, dude, that is awesome. What is the, what is the last course you've completed as far as creation? Uh, the last completed course I did was Storage Plus, and it was like 38 intense nuggets for the students to track their progress with. And that included a tracker as part of the Nugget Lab files? Yep, in the Nugget Lab files, there are trackers there. It's a one through five rating system with a quick reminder from me on how I would use that one through five rating system, and they track their progress. I've had several students tell me that they absolutely love it. One less thing they got to worry about creating on their own. Oh, dude, I love that idea too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start using that. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> no, no. The original concept was your own, so we've come full circle. All right. Uh, anything we can do, as, as because. Anthony and myself and the entire CBT Nuggets family, we, we are just like everybody else. We want to find effective ways to accomplish goals and to assist the IT professional in that same light. So the last step I wanted to point out regarding strategy for preparing for CCNP certification in this brave new world called version 2.0 is to keep on moving. I think it was Winston Churchill who said, if you're going through hell, keep going. Don't stop. So there is going to be a ramp up time as we start learning new technologies. For example, there's going to be vocabulary that we're going to have to learn. There's going to have to be new technologies we're going to have to learn. And once we get to some point in that, in that ramp up, it becomes easier and easier because it becomes more familiar to us. So when in doubt, if you have your goals set up and aligned, keep on moving in the direction of your goals. Now, the next thing I wanted to chat about is the new certification for Route Switch and T-Shoot. This new certification is not, I repeat, it is not your father's or grandfather's certification. This one is built based on testing to see whether or not you and I have the measurable skills, including configuration and troubleshooting, to support a network with the topologies and the technologies that are included in Route Switch version 2.0. So here's what I would strongly recommend as far as your actual practice with the technologies. I would recommend that you actually build your own labs. And I'm sorry, Anthony, is this your slide? I yeah, think no I problem. stole it. No problem. No, I, I was so excited. I was like, I'm going to yeah, talk yeah, about this yeah. slide too, but I'll, let me I'll pass this up. back over to you. Fin yeah, finish your thought and I'll, and I'll pick up from there. Sure. Uh, so I was just going to say that having the hands-on practice to reinforce the concepts is, is critical and a very important aspect of the learning process. Yeah, absolutely, and, and the certification exam is absolutely going to hammer that, okay? I can, I'm not violating the NDA in telling you that simulations are emphasized more than ever in this CCNP, and that means we get to be more prepared than ever because here's the deal. To configure a particular technology, there may be, let's say, four particular approaches, now, ordinarily, we might at some point know all four, and then we decide we're always going to do it with method number two. The problem is the simulation from Cisco Systems might be coded in such a manner that it only allows these two configuration approaches. 
So we really need to be on our toes when it comes to these simulations in the exam environment because we should know all of the methods of configuration to ensure we can succeed in the simulation. Labs are going to be absolutely critical. And that's why here at CBT Nuggets, we're going to take a quite different approach from anyone else when it comes to preparing you for this NP content. We have Jeremy Chara right now, as we record this webinar, he is posting nuggets on the new route version two. Jeremy Chara is going to be concentrating on giving you the theory. Sure, he'll probably be doing some demonstrations of the technology, but it's centered around how the technology works. Keith and I will be following along with our exam walkthrough course for Route Version 2, and we'll be focusing on hands-on labs that you can follow along with in order to fully prepare yourself for both the real-world production environment as well as the simulations in the exam. And of course, we'll be ensuring that you are ready when it comes to multiple choice questions in the exam as well. So we are taking a two-pronged approach to ensure you're ready for NP. Now I wanna take, uh, I know we're gonna have Q&A at the end, but before I pass it back to Keith, I wanna take the five questions that are in the queue and I can answer all five of them. First of all, yes, a mix of old and new exams is permitted. So no problem. If you, wanna, if you end up taking the old route, the old switch, yes, you can take the new T-shoot and you are a CCNP. So Cisco is allowing a mix and match. And I know some of you have concerns about that timing wise. Please don't be concerned. Don't stop your studies. Take your route, take your switch and the old versions when you get to T-Shoot and it is the new curriculum, you are going to prepare for that using our guidance, using the blueprint, we'll have you ready. Don't worry about mixing and matching. You can mix and match with the nuggets you watch at CBT Nuggets to ensure your preparedness. We have a quick question here about Keith Barker's IPv6 course. Is that sufficient for the IPv6 in this exam? Yes, indeed. So imagine that, if you're concerned about IPv6, there is a course right now from Keith Barker that you can watch that will have you proficient for your route exam in the area of IPv6. And the last quick question I wanna pick off that's in the queue right now is, is GNS3 sufficient as a simulator? The answer is a resounding yes for route. Then for the switch and the T-shoot, Keith and I are going to be partnering, and we'll give you the details in our exam walkthrough, we're gonna be partnering with an equipment rental vendor that's very, very inexpensive for CBT Nugget students. If they do not have their own switch equipment with which to practice, we'll make it very, very inexpensive for those students in order to get on real switches and real routers next to them and practice for the switch and the T-shoot. I know many of you were very concerned about the addition of something like DMVPN and IPv6 into this CCNP environment. So here to talk more about that is our own Keith Barker. <laughs> so in answer to this question, I wanna say yes. Have cryptography and IPv6, I can't even say IPv6. Have cryptography, have crypto Oh my gosh, I just I, I gargled this morning, I can't speak. So <laughs> cryptography and IPv6 have raised the bar because they are both integrated as part of route switch. And really the only way to really make sure you're ready for all that is to practice with it. Watch the content, watch the videos, do hands-on practice, and then with that practice to really learn it, you'll go ahead and be able to transfer that over to the certification as well. The other thing I wanna talk with everybody about is regarding getting ready for a CCIE. I remember back in like 1999 when I was brand new to Cisco, I learned to get my CCNA and I was working on my CCNP and I thought, I can use this momentum, this studying that I've done and apply it towards my CCAE and that's exactly what I did. So here are some steps I would strongly recommend when you're studying for your CCNP. The first thing is the very bottom one here, 
and let me go ahead and bring out a pen real quick. And that's this guy. As you study for your CCNP, do it as if you're preparing for your CCIE. I heard, a, heard an author, she said that she had a book, she was writing, she had one year given to her from the publisher to create this book. And what she did is she artificially gave herself a three-month deadline. And I thought to myself, well, how is that going to help? And then she explained. She said, well, by having three months, it helped me increase my focus and the intensity for creating this book. She did not finish it in three months, but she did have most of it done in that three months. So if you're practicing with whatever the technology is, DMVPN, which is on the route switch for CCNP as well as the CCIE, or if you're practicing with border gateway protocol, or if you're doing redistribution, or even you're trying to determine the optimal path through a network. So you're modifying metrics and administrative distances with routing protocols to make the traffic go the direction you want to. As you learn those techniques, which are taught in CCNP for Route Switch version 2.0, you would want to prepare as if you had to deploy this and do it in a CCIE environment. I would also strongly recommend to build your own practice lab, whether that's physical or virtual for the routing portion. And one of the things that we're going to do as part of our our hands-on lab aspect for route switch that Anthony mentioned is we're going to give you the configs. So for example, let's say we're going to do a lab on, I don't know, let's say variance, which is an EIGRP concept. So in the videos, uh, Jeremy would teach about variance and the concept of it. And in our associated companion walkthrough lab that we're going to have for route as well, it would be a lab on implementing variance. And as part of that implementation of variants, we would provide you with all of these startup configs on all of the devices. So if you wanted to lab this up on your own, on your own equipment or in GNS3 or whatever else environment you have, you can take all the startup configs, deploy those, and then actually walk through hands on that lab from that starting point. And we want to have a very short period of time for that ramp up. So you can watch the videos, then you can go right into practicing and not take hours to get your environment set up. We want that environment to be able to be there for you so you can practice in your own lab environment very, very quickly. Also, because a person who is studying for CCNP, one of the benefits of that study is that we're learning how to study. My kids, several of them are in college right now, and as they're going into college, they're learning lots of really cool things, like my son's learning to do um, programming in PHP with web design and so forth. Uh, but my really exciting aspect is that he is learning how to learn, and he can apply those skills regarding how to learn to whatever the next technology is. And that's true for all of us, whether we learned um, you know, networking yesterday and now we're trying to get into voice over IP or, or quality of service or something else that we're trying to learn. The secret is once we're moving, keep that momentum going. And then the top bullet here is – when we're, I know, I know there's certification exams associated with these certifications. However, if while we're studying, we have the attitude of, hey, I am learning this so that I know it by watching, by practicing, and then verifying that we have the skills to discuss it with other people, what exactly how the technology works, how to implement it, and how to troubleshoot it, those skills can translate directly into a production environment. And that's what employers want. They're hiring a CCNP. They want somebody who can implement and troubleshoot and be a good team player and bring value to the company. So by learning it to know it and to be able to apply it, and I have IT in caps there to a little pun there regarding information technology, that's going to be a win-win. And then as a byproduct, if you want to take the exam as well and become CCNP certified, that's great. But having the skills is probably the primary factor that I would drive home for everybody. So um, Anthony, before we uh, turn it over to Megan, and we take a look at any final questions. Um, do you have any, other, any questions in the queue that you want to address or any last comments? We're coming up, we have like maybe six minutes till our time is up. Yeah, certainly. I'll take a couple of these in the queue. One of them is uh, regarding route. So what's the estimated release date? Well, great news on that. <laughs> Boy, over the last three business days, I've seen four new nuggets from Jeremy Chara. So all you got to do is visit the upcoming courses section of our courses page. So you just go up to CBT Nuggets, hit the courses, and then when you're on the courses page, you'll see, you know, uh, courses in development or upcoming courses. Click on that link, and you'll see he's doing them in order, Jeremy is. 
So you've got about, oh gosh, six to eight nuggets of that route course ready to go, ready to view. And I would imagine if he continues at the current pace that he's working at, Jeremy will be done with that in just a couple of weeks. So the entire course will be done in just a couple of weeks. Great news. So let's see. Another question. Uh, yeah, regarding N NP version 2 helping us in CCIE. And as Keith said, oh, my gosh, there is a direct correlation, a direct correlation. One of the new topics in the NP uh, version 2 is VRF light. Guess what? This topic was just introduced as a topic in the CCIE version 5. So why not master VRF light at the NP level? And now you'll just be doing a quick review at your CCIE level, and you've got another topic ticked off of your list. So absolutely use the NP for IE preparation if IE is something that you're interested in. Hey, Anthony, I see a question from Steve. Can I grab that? Absolutely. Steve's asking, uh, will these route simulations match up with the newly released GNS3 version 1.x? Uh, GNS3 has been one of my favorite tools for a long, long, long time. So GNS3, for those of you who are not yet aware of it, is an emulator that allows Cisco's iOS to think that it's running on real hardware. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to provide the configs, the router configs, and then you can deploy those router configs on any platform, whether it's physical hardware or virtualized hardware, that you want to. So we're not going to provide like .NET files specifically um, because those do change between versions of GNS3, but we will provide all the configs. And, and as we look at it further, we're going to do everything we can to make it very simple for anyone who wants to, to have those configs so they can deploy those and then actually do the hands-on practice that Anthony and I are recommending. So fantastic question. Harold's got a great question. Does your CCNP switch version 2 cover NXOS? What a great question, Harold. The answer is no. Now, if you are interested in NXOS training, I'd like you to join me in the data center track here at CBT Nuggets. So please consider taking a look at the CCNA and CCNP data center track here at CBT Nuggets where we dissect the nexus for you in great detail. Uh, you know, we've got a question in here about CCIE service provider. And now, Anthony, this may have to be our last question because we've got like one and a half minutes. So let's, let's do this. Let's take this as our last question. Sounds and great. anybody else who has questions in the queue, um, I'm not sure exactly the best way to follow up with those, but if they want to um, stick around in the queue for a minute and don't leave the conference, we can get to those via text once the call is done. Sounds perfect. So okay. TCIE service provider, we are discussing it. As many of you know, we are currently releasing CCIE version 5 for routing and switching. It is six courses here at CBT Nuggets. Six courses containing 20 to 40 nuggets each, this is one of the largest undertakings we have ever done, if not the largest, at CBT Nuggets. It is indeed meeting with tremendous success. So I think the writing is on the wall that we will be expanding into other CCIE arenas. We just want to stay focused on route switch right now, make sure we do it right, and then we'll take a look at your feedback, the trainer's feedback, and then we will discuss other tracks. So please stay tuned uh, by all means. Again, we are in the third course right now of six courses for the route switch track. All right, Anthony, thank you very much. And everybody who's joined us, we realize that your time is precious in each of our nuggets that we create. We are trying to optimize and make sure that we're taking full use and utilizing every minute that we spend together, whether it's in a webinar or through a nugget. So on behalf of Anthony Sequeira and the entire CBT Nuggets family, we want to thank you all for joining us for this webinar regarding what's new in the CCNP Route Switch version 2.0. Hey, thanks everybody.